Pete here for Studio Live today, and in this GarageBand for iPhone quick tip, we're going to be looking at how to use inter-app audio to control applications outside of GarageBand and use those applications as instruments within our GarageBand project. So let's get started. We've got an 8-bar loop here of some fairly basic guitar and bass, so let's just have a listen to what that sounds like. So I believe that's autoplay setting 4 for those playing along at home if you've uh, played around with the smart instruments before. So it's just 8 bars of G and C just to give us a uh, bass to put an instrument over and show how this inter -app audio works. So we're going to add a new track. So just hitting the plus button down here. And what we're going to select is the inter -app audio. Now if you don't have this uh, setting available, it means you don't have any apps installed. This will only show up once you have some inter-app audio apps installed on your iPhone. So we'll select inter-app audio and it'll open up uh, some options here and we've got at the top here either instruments or effects. So in this video we're going to be adding an instrument. If you want to know about effects, check out the next video. We'll be looking at how to add an effect using this same method. So I've downloaded the iGrand Piano from IK Multimedia. So this is a free app and uh, the, there'll be a link in the description below. So if you want to download this and uh, try it out yourself, um, I recommend it. It's a pretty large app, but it is free and you have plenty of options to upgrade and get a whole lot more instruments and uh, sounds. But in its bass form, we get just a very simple sounding grand piano, but it actually sounds pretty good, probably a little better than the standard garage band piano sound. Um, so in order to record from here, what you'll notice is we've got a little panel along the side here now with some uh, fairly familiar looking buttons. So we have the garage band logo, we have a track rewind, a play and a record, and our time stamp down the bottom here. So we know we're at the start of the track, zero, and what we can do is actually record directly from within the app. So what that saves you from doing is hitting record in GarageBand, having to quickly switch to a new app and then try to record using your instrument. Not an easy thing to do. Having it right here means we can go for it. So let's just hit record and record a quick pass and then we'll see how it looks back in GarageBand. You know what? I deliberately played some wrong notes there just to show you how this would sound and how to fix it. Uh, let's pop back to GarageBand here and we'll hit the undo button, one of my favourite buttons in GarageBand, and we'll try that one again. Um, I'll also, while I'm here, just put the volume of this track up because I've noticed that I couldn't hear it very well. So we'll just maximise the volume of this track, we'll drop our guitar and bass down a little bit. And this will help us actually here when we record. So a few bonus tips in uh, in this particular quick tip. So we'll go back to our track, and we've still got up here the interrupt audio um, icon, and we hit that, and we go back to our piano. Okay, so let's try that recording again. And there's our eight bars recorded, and we can go straight back to GarageBand from here and hit our tracks icon, and there you have it. So there uh, is our track recorded. Now what you'll notice straight away is that unlike the smart instrument tracks up here that are basically MIDI arrangements that we can go in and edit, we can't edit this. So this is the waveform, it's the direct audio recording that's sent from that app straight into GarageBand. So with these ones where we could tap it and say edit, with this one, if we tap it, we don't have that edit option. So we have the settings option here, and this gives us the same sort of settings that we have with any other recording. So if you record via your microphone, if you record via an interface, you get these settings. Um, so you can play with the audio from that point of view, uh, but if your performance is off and you hit some wrong notes, 
the only real way to fix that is to go back and record again. So it means that your performance does have to be pretty spot on, but of course you can uh, you can cut parts out, you can do multiple takes, you can do the splitting and the copying and pasting and looping that you can with any other audio. So that's the basics of how to use the Interapp Audio to get a sound into GarageBand.